Welcome to the Rip Charts Chlorophyll and True Color tutorial. Uh, let's go ahead and hit, the, I've already logged in, let's go ahead and hit the map search page. Um, what we're going to go over today is uh, some True Color images and some chlorophyll images. We'll start with chlorophyll. We offer three types of chlorophyll. Uh, granule images, go ahead and search and look at the thumbnails. What granules are is they are the individual satellite scan when at all possible, utilize a granule first because it's likely going to be the most recent data you can you can look at. Um, not always perfect, but if the granule covers your area, for instance, we'll look off Venice today, then there's really no reason to go any farther. Um, you can see where the different satellites have scanned in, in those particular areas. So we'll go ahead and select this first one. Actually, let's look at daily summaries real quick at the uh, uh, thumbnails. We actually took all the images from yesterday and placed them in one image and, and created a more complete picture for that. In three-day composites, we take three days' worth of data and stack them on each other to, to build an image when clouds are problematic. Um, this is definitely um, helpful in regard, to, uh, in regard to cloud cover and trying to get an indication of where those water color changes are. However, uh, most of the time we're going to look for granules. Um, and that's really the most important image when they're there. So let's click on that first one. That'll open um, the granule, same thing we saw on the thumbnail. Let's zoom in a little bit, and let's start discussing chlorophyll. What we're looking at, um, we've given the different levels of chlorophyll, and we've associated those with colors. We've done our best to represent blue water with the color blue, light blue water with the color light blue, green water, that clean green uh, with the color green, and then yellows and oranges and reds can represent anywhere from very uh, dark green, cloudy water, all the way to, to muddy water. And we can look at a true color image in a minute and to determine what exact colors um, those represent. So, And in shallow water scenarios, sometimes you'll get a false reading, and the true color can help discern that a little bit as well. So we'll look at that here in a second. But let's, let's stay here on the, on the chlorophyll image and discuss it a little bit. So what we're looking for fish, as fishermen are transitions between dirtier water and cleaner water as the fish tend to stack up against those transitions and those fronts and utilize them to ambush bait fish and so forth. So we want to target those transitions and, and to ensure um, successful uh, trolling and fishing as well. So um, a, a few things that jump out at me immediately when looking at this image, you've got a, uh, a great transition from um, some 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 dirtier water into some cleaner water up here by the delta. You've also got a nice transition out here with some interesting little eddies as you go farther offshore. Um, nice little counterclockwise spin here, a nice line here, and then, of course, a nice little counterclockwise here. And I'm talking counterclockwise because here in the northern hemisphere, counterclockwise uh, features are important. In the southern hemisphere, clockwise features are important. Are important. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's zoom in a little closer here and look at this area with a little bit more detail. Um, I'll go ahead and click the bathymetry overlay so we can see what's occurring right here. Um, sure enough, we've got the shelf um, right there. And so you've got a nice water transition. Um, and you also have the shelf that runs across two, two great things occurring right there. Um, let's look at the altimetry and see what's occurring else there. And sure enough, you've got a zero line that runs right here into some negative great transitions occurring, not only color transitions, but altimetry transitions as well as bottom structure. Um, really no reason to run any deeper in my opinion. Um, so, so great set of data right there. So off of one image, um, I really, as a, if I were looking at this image, I can make all the decisions I needed to from this one. Um, so really don't need anything else. But we'll go look at true color and so forth um, because this one's given me a lot of great detail, assuming our sea temps are in line, which I, I imagine they are for this area this time of year. So we'll look at those here in a minute um, under the sea temp tutorial. But so let's back off of that. Let's go ahead and search for true color and look at this image in a true color scenario. A true color is a great data set. Um, it's good for a number of reasons. One, it is very high resolution. We are the only service that processes RGB or true color imagery 
um, in a way that's meant to highlight the watercolor. Uh, most of this imagery has come across um, for land-based uses, i.e., um, this sensor is really kind of to track wildfires and, and different scenarios and droughts and different things on land. Um, but we adjust it so that it highlights the features within the water, and, and that's why um, you find so many users using our true color because um, it does stand out above the rest. Um, in addition, we, we utilize the highest resolution available in this image. Um, you can see where clouds are, and obviously the satellites cannot see through cloud cover in certain scenarios, um, this being one of them when we're looking for, for different watercolors and so forth. So let's go ahead and look at that Venice area again. Um, We'll zoom in, and, and some of that area around the delta that, that was highlighting kind of that red and that orange is, in fact, dirty water. Um, and then as you get farther offshore, some of those greens and yellows we saw um, were in that greener water. Um, so I'll turn that off. So there we have. There was that line that we saw that was kind of that light blue-green line out deeper. Um, those other little transitions are a little hard to see with the true color image in this scenario, but we do know that the water is at least blue out deeper. Um, we have, again, see this nice finger and this nice transition right here. Um, that was the one that was along the shelf, if you recall. And so you just hit the bathymetry and you can see that shelf again. So let's zoom in a little tighter. Um, and then, you know, if you want to see how far that is from the pass, we'll just click and... You know, right at seven miles, so um, pretty darn close uh, for some great water. Um, altimetry, everything is is right there on it that, that looks good. So uh, definitely a great uh, great tool to kind of see what is out there uh, with the human eye. And another thing that's important about uh, true color images. See if I can find a transition in cloud cover. Let me go find another image and um, show you something that that's important. Um, we may have to go to a different. The clouds in the Gulf at times are uh, very persistent, um, so it can be hard. Let's look at this image and see if we can't uh, utilize it to, to make some decisions that otherwise we wouldn't be able to make. Uh, not that particular one. Let's go over it. I believe there's some on the East Coast I saw earlier. So I'm going to do a quick search over there, get to some thumbnails. And here we go. What's interesting about uh, satellite data is that there's some interference there, sun glare, cloud glare, and certain things that, that can get in the way. But with the true color image, we can discern things with the human eye that sensors kind of filter out. So I can look, for instance, right up in here and see there's a nice little transition that's running right along here. Whereas in, in the other imagery, that transition would likely be blocked out with those little clouds right there. And so I can make out that rip line um, in this scenario, whereas in other scenarios I would not be able to do so. So it definitely can be beneficial, and it definitely can be a trip saver at times. So no matter what's occurring on the other images, always try to pay attention to true color to kind of see what is happening out there. It, it definitely, at certain times a year, can save a trip. And if there are any questions whatsoever about the different data sets, uh, feel free to call us or feel free to email us and say, hey, I've got a trip. I'm looking at X, Y, and Z and, and see if we interpret the things that you interpret them the same. So um, I appreciate the time. And uh, thank you for listening to the Chlorophyll and True Color Rip Charts tutorial. Let us know if you uh, need any assistance with anything. And uh, we'll be here to help.